So this is just going to be an overview of the LNC 6800 controller. It's on my Salix 7. 7. Um, it's very similar to the 5800 model. And the only difference, as far as I know, is that the screen is bigger. I think it starts at like 7 inches for the 5800. This is about, I think it's 10 inches or, or a little bit more than 10 inches. Um, you get all the soft keys down here. I think even over here, this is this is different too. I think on the 5800, most of it are like membrane keys or something like that. Um, oh, and then you can also control, you have 4 plus 1 control. So if I want to put a 5th axis, it'll do, I think it'll do the 4th with tool center point control and the 5th fifth, fifth axis only position or wherever your 5th your is. Um, yeah, so here's just the run through. Right now I'm on position. Uh, I'll switch it over to memory. So you have coordinates. You can see it changed from absolute to distance to go. MPG move distance. Absolute. I like to just keep it in absolute. You can count the number of parts that you, or I guess the number of cycles you run, which is the number of parts in theory that you would make. And then you can set a count max. Here's where you set the count for everything. Clear run, clear count. Uh, I don't know what this does. Oh, oh, okay. I guess you can say like, if you start at, if you're at like count five and you're like, oh no, actually I want to be at ten, then you just punch in ten over here and you click input. This is basically your enter button. And then count max, and you can set it to whatever a hundred. And I'm not sure what happens when you hit it. If maybe a little window opens up, but I don't really use that. Okay, let's move back. Variable all your different local and global variables. I've never used anything like that before, so I'm, I'm kind of a novice user still. I mean, I've been CNC machining for about seven years, but mostly using, using um, CAM processors, not having to touch macros or anything. Work info or your G codes, G54. Um, usually I use G55 for what I have on the Pearson. G54 is gonna be um, usually a top left corner and my current DX4 also on a Pearson palette. Okay, relative, this is if you want to use it kind of like a DRO, if you clear all, clear X, clear Y, clear Z, any of that, don't don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't touch any of your G54 work offsets, it doesn't touch any of that, it's just purely for your reference. Um, where, yeah, this is all your tool wear, I don't really use that. Uh, oh, how do I go back, reset, okay, I'm just going to click that graph you can see um, a preview of your toolpath you can also change it this is in um, X and Y you can change it so it's Z and Y ZX all the, I guess the six or five different configurations load the servo load in XYZ and your spindle load and then program is set I've actually never really clicked this in this particular spot so I guess you can you can click what line you want to start at I know that oh wait wait, wait hold on so line search, you can search line. Number search, uh, I don't know what that really is. Line break, I uh, actually don't want to click that. M search, so if you want to just choose like M3 or M08 or M8 or whatever whatever you use. Let's go back. See, I don't, I don't have my code up anymore. I guess I do. Anyways, if you get stuck like this and you're like, whoa, what's going on? Just hit reset. And see, my original code came back. So go back to program reset. I know you can do a T search and program search. You can actually line research, search, search up, program, search down, search up, program search, line, okay, program search. So I guess if I want to find, like, I don't know, let's try for giggles. G20, enter. frozen a little bit. Oh, my bad. Page down. <laughs> Let's find next. Page out. Find previous. So page down. Oh, here's page down. Page down is over here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Page down. There we go. Bingo. It's found it. Can you actually start a program from here? I've sort of tried that and I think 
Oh, you know what we have to do? We have to go back here. Let's say, make sure I'm on 25% rapids. I might get an error message. Okay, no, there's no error message. So, I haven't quite used the whole start from like, I don't know, my second or third operation. But I know, um, I have tried a little bit in the past, like I'll say start from this bracket. And it'll give me an error message. I haven't gone back to check and try to figure it out. So that's that's just on me. I haven't taken the time to really learn it. Um, okay, we're pretty much done with everything on the the main position memory. There's also MDI. So if you click if you on mine, I have a dial. I think it's a button on the 5800. If you click MDI, then you can just you know type whatever your manual data input is. So I'm gonna say I don't know tool T3 and then M M6. I've heard you don't need the M6, but I think I tried just T3 and didn't do anything. Anyways, oh, you don't you don't press enter to save this. You press login, and then you just make sure you're at MPI. You press the green button, just like start. Now it's on 203. Okay, um, MPG is over here. You have to unlock your door. I like this because you, you can't. It's it's kind of a nice safety feature. Some people might find it kind of annoying, but I, I like safety features quite a bit. Especially because I'm usually, usually working in my garage. Um, okay, so the doors are open, obviously. I have an MPG. I highly recommend you pick up an MPG. If you don't pick up an MPG, and you're just sitting here pushing the little jog buttons in your machine, you're going to get tired of it in like 30 seconds. So it's on X and 100, and obviously, this is moving. Okay, that's, I think that's it. Now everyone, you can also see the tool setter. I haven't even tried setting that up. I just use my one, two, three blocks and then I do tool offsets from the Pearson. I'm gonna set that up one day, but it, it's, I'm not doing anything like intense overnight machining where I need to have tool, tool breakage detection yet. So it's kind of a, just a low priority for me. But I think it should be somewhere in here. So I just clicked offset and you can see your coordinates there's different ways so a square I think there's a diagram this is I have never set up a part like this unless there's a bore in the center but you can set you know your min x min, uh, max max y uh, max x y and y again uh, okay 1.2.3 set z coordinate section well I don't want to do that okay variable this this whole thing again oh my bad we're supposed to be an offset Tool management. This is where you basically um, touch off your tools or, or input the tool length. So let's say let's say right now I have two or three, and this is this is zero. This is where I want it to be zero. What I would do then is punch 9.2862. So 9.2862. It's going to show up over here. You're going to click input, and your tool. Well, you actually have to be highlighted on the tool, but your tool highlighted will change and reflect the absolute value. Um, and I would always double check just in case, like when you're first starting off with this machine in the first month or two, double check to make sure that you actually have the right height. Or when you're running your programs, run it, always run it in 25% when that tool is getting close to your workpiece. Because the last thing you want is for the Z to just come crashing down or to just wrap it in your part because you mess up your tool, um, you mess up your part, you, you might well, you'll guarantee you'll decrease the lifespan of your spindle. Um, okay, so... Actually, let's go back to offset. T t no, t I'm, I don't use this. But you can, I guess you can kind of set the tool life in there for a number of cycles, maybe, or, or cycle time. Heat chain. Let's see what? Set C. Oh, you can set X, Y, and Z. But I don't, I don't use that. Okay. Offsets, coordinate backup, oh, ATM. So I think somewhere in here, and I was sort of reading the manual a little bit, now this is where you set the position of your automatic, or your, your tool setter. Yeah, I'm not sure, I gotta read the manual, but I'm pretty sure it's just, you, you kinda tell the machine like where that is, and you set like, I guess, here, I guess here's a Z position to X and Y position. And I think there's like a feed rate, so it's spindle speed. There's ATM set, ATM pause. 
first ATM. Teach X, Y, T. Oh, here's probably where you set the position of it. And I have no idea what this is. Okay. I'm set. We're pretty much done with this program. So here's where you can just see the meat of the program. Oh, actually, this is also how you select files that you want to actually load on the machine that you want the machine to run. So to do that, you just go to File. And it's as simple as just, you know, scrolling down. Let's say I want... This is a puzzle I was making. You just This is blinking in blue, and you just hit Enter. And this goes away, and you're probably going to be brought back to... Oh, I guess I have to cancel. Whoa, what's going on? Okay, cancel. Brought back to this. Save. Oh, I guess save is if you're... If you're editing anything in here, graph, I like this function. Press all and it'll start graphing it. So you can obviously see it's in X and Y. And I think if you want this to go faster, I think if you crank up the feed, oh, it's done already. Anyways, if you crank up the feed, I think it actually does go faster. Step, so zoom in. This is, this is kind of useless for me because now I've zoomed in too much, but whatever. You set, you can change X and Y to like YZ. All you have to do is enter one. See the one over there. Input. Now you change it. Border set. I don't. I don't really touch any of that stuff. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to program. Oh. Here it is. Here's the Z axis where my zero is. Now obviously you probably want, you don't need a hundred, I don't know if this is 120 inches. You don't need this much. All you really care about is this. I'm sure, I'm sure you can zoom in right here or you can set, you know, the X and Y and all that kind of stuff, but not a high priority for me. Okay, let's go back to program, programs. Oh, I guess you can do all the other things that I, I never touch, ways to edit it. And then file management. So let's say you have a USB drive in like I do. You want to go to USB disk import. You can see all my files. You just scroll whatever when you want. And then you, when, you, when you hit input, it check marks it, and then you just hit transfer, and it'll, it'll go over here. Um. Okay. Oh, I I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of there. Diagnose. This is where any error messages show up. I have none. It's a good day today. Maintenance. Uh, oh. This is kind of easy, uh, not easy, this is kind of interesting. So I'm on user 3, but if you're a user 5, I think you can start to do things like ignore some error messages, or maybe set your own macro, I'm not too sure, but, but there's more that you can do. This is, I've, I'm basically cautioning you, if you're going to go to user 5 and you need a password and, and the you know, sal can supply that, but if you're going to go to user 5, I advise you to use extreme caution because now a lot of the um, the things that help catch mistakes aren't there. So this is kind of more for more skilled users. And all this stuff, I just don't, I don't, I don't mess with. I'm, I'm just not really interested because it works. Path, I guess path doesn't do anything. And not, not in this state, anyways. Wait, let's see. Okay. Nope. Let's hope it doesn't do anything right here. Alarm. Okay, so you basically, this is the diagnostic page, basically. Yeah, see, I've just clicked diagnostic and it doesn't change. But you have F function one, two, three. I've never had to use that. You have all your letters, and within the letters, you just double click, and then, and then that this, the the um, I guess the subletter comes out. The numbers, your different asterisks and whatnot. I haven't had to use home or N yet. Shift. All that. Okay, let's look down here. The only things that I think. You can click it and the light will go on, but I haven't seen anything happen. So I don't know if there's like a spare M code perhaps that um, is not hooked up to anything. But well, coolant one, that's connected to the, the big um, pump in the back. So that's for coolant. We don't, I don't have any chip conveyors. I don't have oil mess. We do have door. You can hear me locking and unlocking. The lock is up here. It's up right there. I like it. Um, and then it locks automatically when you close it. You have F1, F2, F3. That's kind of standard for controllers. I haven't had to use that yet. 
I haven't used any of these. I've used clockwise stop, um, counterclockwise for the spindle. I haven't used orientation. These actually don't do anything. Like if I if I press mag pop, I kind of expect the tool changer to push the tool down, but it doesn't. Oh, this actually did something. Look, it's changing. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. I guess I never heard it before. You have the work light. It comes standard with one over here. I kind of, I think I might put one in this corner in the future. Uh, yeah. What else is there? Pumping. Now there's an automatic oiler in the back, but I don't hear it right now. So maybe this doesn't do anything. Nope. I think this air blow is actually in the spindle. Um, and your different jog fun functions for your X, Y, Z, rapid, whatever. Um, off on, your emergency stop, cycle start, cycle pause. This is if you want to, um, I think if it's in the one position, it's locked. So you can't mess with the programs on the machine. Memory, manual data input, MPG. I don't use these two, but these are probably rapid and jog. This is your reference zero, so if you click this, or, or move it all the way over here, and you press cycle start, the machine will reference or will home itself. Um, also, here's another example of what that can do. I'm just gonna lower the Z a little bit. <clears throat> okay, you can also just press Z, like in this one, and I'll just home the Z axis. This is your feed rate, feed rate override, zero to 150. And if you look up here, I'm, I'm turning it and you can actually see the fee rate override changing. This is the spindle override. You can run the spindle. I'll just run the spindle in manual mode, spindle clockwise. Now I'll turn this. Now obviously you can hear the different changes. Stop. Rapids, 25, 50, 100. Um, in the, uh, the magazine number and the actual tool in the spindle. And that about sums up everything that I know about here. We have USB, Ethernet. I'm going to set this up one day. Yeah, that's about it. That's, that's my quick um, overview of the LNC 6800 controller.